this is a 1.9 meter long shelf floating shelf um, and this will be the basis okay so what I'm doing is I've just joined two of the pieces of flexi track I have I'm using code 80 wooden sleepers but little pieces of fixed track solder them to the long track you shouldn't do this but that's what I'm doing I want continuity between the tracks all the way through the idea here is to have two mainline tracks basically doing an S along the board okay so I'll just give you an example I've got my solid piece of track and I've got the flexi track with the uh, joiner on it obviously you just join them together now I solder these together with a solder that's got flux in it I've seen people have a, a, a flux paste a bit like what plumbers use on copper tubing you can use that if you haven't got uh, flux in your solder I would advise having that um, I'll get the solder in view what I'll do though, you've seen this in previous videos, I'm just going to solder the outside of the rails not the inside because that's where the wheels run now I'm making sure that these are butted up and there's no gap between the rails I've got my solder iron nice and hot 455 degrees celsius it's very hot and I do that so that the heat actually does a thing quite quick so let's just move that down to the bottom there of the screen now I'm going to introduce the solder and the heat at the same time on the outside of the rail and hold it and you'll see it just gets sucked in there and that's it, okay? It's quite quick. And just give it a second, but it should be pretty done. There you go. Now, if any solder decides to have a, like a capillary reaction to the top of the rail, you can just sort of clean that off with, I use a file, you shouldn't, but I do. Um, but it's, this is how I do all my rails, and it's worked a treat. And that's the second one. Okay, so the track's soldered together, and I've laid it out on this shelf. Um, I don't put any pen on the shelf or anything like that. I just do it all by eye and feel. Um, what I do, though, is use these bricks quite a lot. Um, I'm using those as my spacing. What you really want to do is actually get the coaches and the trains, and probably, you know, I, I look at photos and whatnot and just compare the real world to Engage. What you don't want though is this coach hitting that coach at any point and there's plenty of clearance there i just worked out that this is pretty much bang on the distance they need to be from each other so as long as i keep that distance between the two parallel tracks all the way through we'll be good so that's what i do what i haven't done before and what i'm probably going to do here is heavily elevate this track so what i mean by that is the top side rails on both here because that they're, they're, they're curving around this way they're gonna camber around and do this so those that know elevated track that's what I'm gonna do with this and the idea behind this is just so that I can hoof train through it and then hopefully get a camera shot from down here and it'll look pretty good so that's what we're doing Okay, so what I've decided to do here, um, I've spaced the track, obviously a brick apart, all the way along. But what I've also done is used, simply just used cocktail sticks, and I've eyed this up, okay. So you can see there's a, a camber or elevation there, just on the outside of that track. And you can see the cocktail stick literally wedged in there. What I need to do is just put some bits of uh, sleepers in, like that. I'll just put some of those in there. I've got a few from when I cut them off when I just joined the track together. So I'll fill up these gaps, and then the next thing to do is literally ballast this. Uh, normally what I would do is actually spray the whole board uh, brown, but I'm not going to do that this time. I'm going to try something different. Okay, so the tracks are down. The sleepers are filled in now. Uh, in the middle there, you can just about see them. Now what I'm thinking actually is adding just this extra siding, just so it's an uh, element of interest. I don't want any points on this layout, um, but also I think if I put that siding there, it will highlight the elevations on the rest of the track. So something like this, you've got the two lines there, 
But what I'm trying to achieve here is not cutting out view of incoming trains on the main lines via, via a camera. So I think I'm going to go for something like this. So it's just tapering in like it's going to join one of the main lines. And it just gets a bit wider here. So I think I'm going to just stick this down. And then you see what this can be is just a buffer end here. And I can just have random bits of stock in, in there or locos or things. I'm just going to glue this down, a bit of super glue. And then, then we'll get on with the ballasting. Okay guys, so I'm going to put a bit of ballast down. What I've got here is Woodland Scenics medium ballast and uh, this is this there's an art to it once you've got it on the board is how I do it um, I'm literally just gonna cake a bit on here so you can see I'll just do a little section and see what I've done then so obviously it's a mess um, what I tend to do is I'll just fan it out with my fingers Absolutely covering it as you can see. Um, I've probably put, well, what I tend to do is start one end of the track and work my way down. So that's that. This is the bit I really want to show you. I've got a brush, right? Now that's about as wide as the sleepers on the track. It's quite hard bristled. And I'll go this way. And just work your way along then. And you'll see one or two little stragglers on the sleepers. Ta da! So that's what I'm doing across the whole track. Um, and then we'll come in with the glue and then glue it down. Okay, so I've done the ballasting. Oh, I've got to be careful breathing on it because it's loose. Now I'm going to be using this glue, uh, it's Contractors PVA, it's just 5 litres of PVA glue basically. And I find it works quite well versus uh, like Poundland stuff. Now what I do is I mix one part of that with two parts water, so basically a third of glue and then two thirds of water. And then I'll add two drops of like a washing up liquid. Uh, the idea of the washing up liquid is to break the surface tension of the water, however I still get it with this ballast, so I've got to be very careful with this. So I'll show you now, uh, I'm using a, a pipette, pipette? Oh, I can't say that word, you can see what it is. Pipette is what it is, it's called a pipette. Now, um, I'm going to just run this next to the ballast, and I'm just going to give you an example. Now, you'll see this, I'll zoom in. You see it, it's soaked in there a little bit. Now I'll just do uh, this bit here because then you can actually see what is going on. I'm putting on the white bit of the shelf and you can see the ballast there, it's just getting attracted to it. So I'm not putting this directly on the ballast. What I'll do is I'll do this all the way along and it'll soak, in, soak into the, um, the ballast and it'll kind of go sort of track side and I just keep going up and down, up and down until it's basically done all of the ballast across the track the danger is if you put glue directly on top of the ballast what it'll do is it'll bulb up the ballast over the glue and it just messes it all up it creates pockets in the uh, ballast so I'll, count, I'll continue to do all this okay so here we are um, I've just wetted all of this flooded it so you can see what I've done here, um, I will pretty that up later, um, although I don't think it's really needed. What we're trying to do here is just get a nice even-ish coat uh, thickness wise on the tracks. I think it's fairly consistent and if we come down here, you can see, you know, it's coming along real nice. Um, so the next thing for me to do, I think, is, because um, I'm literally just winging this, so we're about three hours in for that, I'm going to make some verges, so I want almost like a, not, not hill, but just sort of, well, verges, yeah, just uh, following roughly the contour there, and at the front as well, normally people just focus on the back stuff, but what I want is the camera angle 
from down here looking down so anything you're going to see along the way really is important for me so it's both sides and the idea is as well that this part of the track actually goes it's out of sight so looking down here what I need to do about there like see how the the white there cuts in I'm going to have to verge so it you can't see where the layout comes from basically so there'll be a verge and just an absolute abundance of trees all the way along here okay okay so as it's drying out um, I've been strategically placing little blocks again now the idea here is um, these are placed in points where I need the verge to kind of be <coughs> now now down here looking down it might become apparent that those bricks there you see if that's the verge going into the track and then coming up sweeping up and there's trees on there that hides my in and out of this uh, shelf now if we put the camera sort of about here what I need to try and do I think I need to be a bit clever this side um, because it's very close to the edge but um, on the other side here it doesn't really matter it doesn't matter so much I think that's the kind of thing we're looking at here so I just need um, verge and trees to go above what the camera's seeing pretty much to give a sort of realistic look on things um, and go from there really so the, what I'm getting at is the, these are the points that I need to make absolute points to work how I need it to the rest I can fill in with whatever I want really um, but the hill really yeah it needs to come up because I can only put so many trees on the on the thing um, but we, we shall continue um, I definitely need to be coy with what I do here so I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to cut up some card and just start actually sticking card down here and just trying to get a rough landscape with card um, and then I might just raise it up uh, once you know with uh, the the blocks uh, and give it the height there with the blocks so it'll be sort of blocks holding up cardboard and then we'll come in with some plaster cast and plaster cast it on Okay, so this looks like a lot of a mess, but what I've done is, as you saw, I'm just I just went round and I super glued loads of cardboard down, a bit like paper mache. Um, I've not done anything to the back here. I can worry about that later on, and I think what I will actually do is probably I'll plaster cast it as it is, and I'll probably plast probably plaster cast it down to here as well. Uh, but it's you know it's just to make the shelf not look flat it's basically all you're doing but I'm also making it strategic so from this angle that disappears behind what will be I've made it higher than it needs to be really because the trees will hide its disappearing point and then along here you can see there's varying uh, verges and they're all over the place and they're going to be full of trees now at this point here if we come back that should then hide the back of the board down here pretty much and if not that will so that's the idea uh, I'll plaster cast away I'll show you that um, it's quite easy. I'll show you what I've got as well. Um, I've just got to um, put something down so that I don't get plaster cast on, on everything. So I'll do that and we'll have a go at plaster casting.
Okay, so here's the plaster cast. Um, I've finished up plaster casting all the cardboard and it's fairly dry now. Also what you'll notice is I've actually put enough application of glue into the ballast. Um, I just want it to be rock solid, no loose pieces, so that's a way of assuring that. Um, I gave it a hoover just before I did a re-soak of PVA. What I'm going to do though uh, is whilst that's still going off, um, this little central piece between the rails here uh, and probably I'll get a bit carried away probably just around the edges of this track I'm going to be putting some brown um, effectively ballast but it's kind of an imitation of mud well it's called fine ballast brown uh, by Woodland Scenics uh, so that's what I'm going to do at least here and then I'll just see how I get on because I might add a bit there you know I'll just as and when and I'll show you what I've, what I've got um, it's quite straightforward really I'm just gonna be careful with where I sprinkle it because this is still wet so it will it will adhere but I'm gonna concentrate on filling this gap as neat as I neat ish as I can pinch in a piece out of the cup and I'm just sprinkling it just carefully on the edges trying to give it an even layer where I can Doing that with your fingers kind of modulates how much is actually getting chucked out. I'll carry on, and then what I do is get some water PVA mix and just douse this whole lot in PVA glue and PVA glue again, just so it's all stuck down. Okay, so here we are. It's dried off a little bit in the centre there, and I got a bit carried away as you can tell, and I, I did actually the perimeter of all the track. I didn't focus too much on the hills because they're just going to go brown um, and I can add uh, dirt and whatnot. I just wanted to get, again, base colours down. So I think the next thing, actually, I'm, I'm very impatient, so what I'm going to do is probably just try and brush some of these somewhat brown. Not, I'm not going to the ballast because it's still wet. You can see how it's soaking up this plaster cast. So uh, I'm going to mix neat PVA glue with acrylic paint and I'm just going to brush it on. And here we go, uh, this is PVA glue mixed with brown paint. Not very exciting. Uh, you can see actually what I've been doing here. It kind of it helps with closing up the gaps on the, the, uh, the, the plaster cast here. Again, it doesn't really matter because what, what I'll be adding on here is just going to hide all that anyway. Okay, so next up, um, the, so these hills have dried now. And um, so is everything, pretty much. Um, but I'm left in a dilemma of what to do here. Now I think what I'm going to do is actually use modeler's clay and just um, sort of thumb it into the side of this hillside. Okay, so what I'm using here is it's white modeler's clay. Um, it's from Hobbycraft, there's no endorsement there. I don't know what other clays are like. Um, it says that it, will, it can air dry and you can paint on it. Uh, they do a terracotta colour. Now what I do is I, I put it in this food bag. I try and get as, as much air out of it as I can. So that I have a, it kind of seals the bag back up and it just stays sort of damp because you don't, you don't, want, the dry, uh, you don't want the clay to dry out. And um, we'll just start off here. I'm just grabbing a little bit out of the pot this is I think this is a better option for this side of this hillside okay so I've put clay on the back side of this hillside I've done a little bit here and I've done a little bit here now the next thing I'm doing is this uh, so it's like a kind of rocky sort of chiseled out look of the mountain-y type hill. I was going to leave them flat and just paint them black but I think it would look a bit odd whereas if I do something with it it would look half decent. I'm just going to show you what I do here so put you in the little stand. Um, all I'm doing, so that's the base, 
and to smooth that out you just get a wet finger and just wet the clay it's quite quite easy now I'm just gonna make some sausages or long shapes like this out of clay um, start on the top there and then just kinda push it roughly into the hillside something like that and then we'll get another one did the same thing now this is to add a um, a regular pattern to it so you can do this however you like it doesn't really matter I think the artistry of this really comes from what I'll show you in a second but I'll just show you that you can see I'm not being terribly neat with it and I'm be trying to be in somewhat random um, I just I mean this isn't mega accurate to what I'm after or, or sorry this isn't gonna give you you can spend as long as you like doing something like this um, I just want a half-assed look <laughs> that I've tried is the easiest way of me saying this I'm not gonna spend ages doing this because once this is all painted and weathered, this isn't the focal point of the layout. You're not going to see it in the videos. This is just for me, or when it's on the on the wall, so it looks not like a non-smooth surface that I've painted on. So working these sausages in here, some of different sizes. Uh, I would say though, what you want to do is like see here. There's a bit of an edge. Just try and smooth that in. You could wet your finger and do this, although I like the roughness of not doing that, so not smooth. And now because the clay I'm putting this on to is actually slightly damp and wet, it's sticking to it quite nicely. It's just little tricks I've picked up. You want it, you know, fairly damp. Uh, and actually on camera there, it doesn't look too bad. Like it looks fairly convincing as it is. Um, I find as well a lot of finishing getting the look of something if you paint it in the right way that can be helpful so not you're not necessarily trying to get the finished look here with clay but you know spend your time if you wanted to you know maybe copy something like along the lines of what I'm doing right now that's cool I'll just do one more down here and I'll show you the uh, the other bits Yeah, this is much I think this was a good decision okay so the next thing I'm doing now just smooth out the bottom a little bit because I want that to sort of smooth off to the edge I have got a kebab stick or what was one I've just snapped the end off of it now what we're going to do here is add I don't know what you'd call them but like fracture lines within the side. These are quite deep. You can try and join them if you want. And if you go wrong or you're not quite sure on something you can always sort of wet your finger and, and smooth these back out. I'm, I'm really being like relatively random here but you see how deep they are. I can do that as well because the clay is quite thick. sort of fracture lines in there, yeah there we go. Now what I'm going to do is use this end of the kebab skewer and I'm going to go down as well, not as hard, just you know just sort of like kissing it. Yep. So there are vertical lines sort of more concentrating on the bits I haven't just done with the uh, the, the hard giving it a go sort of thing. Now uh, this would be about the same sort of pressure really. You want to do horizontal lines like this or this I'm not saying oh, this is how you do it but this I've been getting good results doing this and uh, it's quite convincing I think. Yeah la 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 pretty random 
you see like this little bit you wouldn't get a rock doing that so that's kind of like what you want to get rid of um, if you see you could probably work from these uh, splits these vertical splits and work your way out that would be a good way of doing it as well So hopefully you're seeing this kind of come together. What I like is when you've done, um, I'll do this in a gray, a bit like the, there's another layout I did like this. Um, I'll spray it gray and then I'll dry brush the high spots with like a white and it really makes all these contours just pop. And I think for the most part, I'm going to call that kind of it. So now, I mean, it's, yeah, it's not 100% maybe to, I mean, you can see how quickly I've just done this. But I, th I quite like the finish that we'll get from this. And once it's all sprayed up, it will look glorious. So you just do all sorts of things. Uh, you could even actually... Like here, you see, you could, if I just dabble this in there and make a bit of a pocket and just weave all that sort of stuff out. There, just there where it's like it's flat, I can actually put a bit of dirt and just a smidgen of grass so it breaks up the solid brick area. Um, let's just try and merge that a little bit. Yeah, so there you go, that's what I'm going to do on the rest of it. Um, you can buy uh, like a brick sort of templates if you like. You just pour stuff in them or put clay in them. But um, this is like one off. That's that's it, just like that. So this side I let it dry, and then I can I'll show you it when I spray it. Uh, but I'm going to carry on doing the rest of it just like this, and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, so here's the finished result. Um, it's yet to be painted. So what I'm, I'm trying to get to the point where I can airbrush everything. Um, so that this is that rocky face. Um, I've done a little bit here. There's a tiny little bit here, and there's a little bit there as well. It's just enough to make it look more real. Okay, so I'm at a point where I'm gonna do some airbrushing. Now, what I'm gonna start with is brown so that I can fade the hillside into this um, mud stroke ballast. Uh, and so I'm gonna do these bits. And all I'm gonna do is put some brown in a cup. This is acrylic paints that I'm using. Uh, it'll be brown. And then what I'll do is if it's too light, I'll keep adding black till it darkens the shade down to a rough match. Acrylic paints dry brighter than when they're wet. So I've got to bear that in mind, so I'll make it a bit darker than I actually need. Uh, and what I'm doing is I've got this little air compressor here. I got that from my friend, and uh, it's been brilliant. Uh, this airbrush itself uh, is a cordless airbrush, but I've actually just adapted it to fit onto this air compressor. And I've not messed with really any of the settings, it just sort of works. Um, I'm telling you all this now because I can't tell you when it's running. running. So build up pressure, uh, so when once you're, it's on demand, so when you're using it, it will just flow as much as you need. So I'm telling you this now because that's quite loud. Uh, I've got some plastic cups, um, I have got airbrush thinner, this stuff is amazing, I would highly recommend this. This stuff is brilliant uh, because it allows you to use cheap paints. It's also great for cleaning the gun out. My main colours in this will be green. Or not even, I might not even use green. Black is a definite. White is a definite. And brown is a definite. Okay, we're back. So what I've done, this is the viscosity that I've made this into. It's nearly the same as the thinners, to be honest with you. You want to keep mixing it till you basically don't get any bits. Um, and some are unavoidable because of the cheaper paints. If you get Vallejo acrylic paints, they're great, um, they're very good, they're, they're very pigmented so they go a very long way, you can thin them out really thin. Um, and, I mean even even though this is cheapy paint, there's still quite a bit of pigment there so 
we're good. Uh, so I'm fairly sure that's going to go through the gun just fine. I've not added any black. I'm going to spray this on, see how we get on, because really this is just the same colour as those mountains, so it should blend well. So So I've filled in those bits there, the brown enough to be covered with grass because the grass is actually going to be from here going up the hillside. Then I've done this little rocky side. Now this looks like I've done an awful lot of work here and I haven't. All I've done is basically mixed up grey with um, the acrylics and you'll see some bits darker than others which is odd uh, but all that is is I sprayed down the cracks chung, 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 and they just like randomly as well and then I, you know I'm spraying the whole thing grey and then this is what we've actually ended up with I put a little shelf there I talked about earlier on uh, and there's just some um, brown ballast on there I might put some grass in there um, but it looks I think it looks okay okay guys I thought I'd show you this because I'm spraying the track now I've gone for like a ready brown colour you can see what I'm doing, well you can see what I've done, like the tones are coming down now, there's not like bright colours of things, they're all sort of like weird browns and greys, and all sort of like starts to flow. I'll show you what I'm doing, I'll turn the air compressor on because this is really the only way to do it. So bear with me here, you can see the back one there I've kind of done, you'll just see what I do. And look at this rail here okay I just do the back one because you probably didn't see that very well hopefully you're seeing that Okay, so here she is now. Uh, this is just dark grey on what you just saw. Okay, on a lot of things. Okay, so that was it. Um, it's, it's funny how with just basically three colours you can kind of create quite a lot of different colours. I mean, that looks almost like rock coming out of the ground on its own. Um, and that's not my plan. What my plan is is if there's a colour coming through the grass, it's not one colour. It's going to be a mix of stone and, and mud and whatnot. I've done the same on here. Um, so the next thing, let's dry out. Uh, it shouldn't take too long, really. Uh, again, being impatient. And I think I'm going to try some static grass. Um, what I've got, it's by WW Scenics. And I will put another link in the description to this. I'm going to be trying. Uh, yeah, it's not this one. <laughs> so what I've got here, this is 4mm spring grass. I wanted a contrast to it. I might add that later. What I'm going to be putting on here is 2mm autumn grass. Okay. So, um, because I want loads of trees on here. The idea behind this is it's a darker shade of green. It's a bit of a mixed chop strandy type thing they've got. They're all different colours, should we say, but a darker blend. And this stuff I'm aiming to sort of get sort of around the trees and the base of the trees because it's darker. Um, but generally what I'll do, because the other one's four mil longer, is in rougher areas, which will be most of it, I'll also put a blend of four mil grass in there and it's a lighter shade of green. So it'll be patchy. So you just want to mix up the colours a lot as you go in. Uh, I might put a little bit of grass in there even, you'll see it come alive because at a minute it looks like the surface of Mars or something so um, I don't know what I'm doing, it just feels like I'm doing the right thing for what I'm trying to achieve and you'll notice as well here I've got that masking tape on the front of this shelf now that was to aid any 
um, rubbish going down the front of this shelf. Um, I've not done the sides because I'll probably just wipe them down, but it's been really handy actually to just get the spray gun spraying right on this and then I just go straight onto the work. It's really handy and it's also stopping paint going onto the shelf. So I think the next thing I'm going to do is do a bit of static grass. We'll give that a go, shall we? I've got PVA glue in a cup. Now this is what I'm going to be putting on where I want the grass. So wherever I put that, the grass will stick. Um, I've also got a, a semi, um, it's not super hard. I suppose it is by brush standards, but I'm going to use this to brush the paint, uh, the PVA onto the landscape. And uh, then what we've got is it's a static grass applicator. I've got about the cheapest one I could find. Um, if I can find a link to it, I'll put that in the description as well. I'm putting that on there. I'm going to put this crocodile clip there. And you see it, it's just there. It's important to put it in a place where you can discharge this unit on it. Uh, the idea here now is to now brush over everything we've just done with PVA glue pretty much. Well, wherever the grass is going. There we go, look. Uh, don't forget to discharge it. So what have we got? Well, I can see a lot of these are falling over. That's probably because I've buried a load on top of others. Whilst it's in this stage, I probably shouldn't, but I'm actually going to get the hoover and just suck these off, and then we'll, we'll have another look at it. Um, I'm not going to do it for here, because I'm going to be wasteful, but I will do it in a minute. Um, you can put a stock in over the end of the hoover and it'll collect all these fibres, so you can hoover them up um, and sort of reuse them. Um, now I actually had to start and stop the grass so I thought I'd put a bit of a path in there and there's one leading up there from where the siding would be I guess you know people might go down to the wagons and have a look at them or something when they're parked up or the, the trains whatever um, yeah it's coming out pretty good uh, you can see that that's just two mil there and then what I tried to do is add some glue and add 4mm on top of that. That glue should go clear. Um, so yeah, the, I've got to add uh, superstructure, uh, which would be the quaternaries for the electrics. I'm probably going to drill a hole for those and just place them in so I can remove them if I wanted to. Um, but I think in a minute uh, it's pretty much go time on trees. So if we go back to this view down here, starting to make a bit of sense. Let's say there's a train coming in the distance there, like uh, up where this S curve is. It sort of goes out of sight, and I just I need them trees to just sort of like fill the screen basically. So I haven't got to swarm this layout with trees. Just got to put them all in strategic places. I have got a box full of what are potentially trees. These are sea foam trees, okay? Now, what you do is you break them apart and use the bits that you think look like a tree. Most people spray these with contact adhesive or hairspray, and then what they do is they pebble dash them with um, like green scatter for layouts. Um, actually, I am loving this. That looks more like a tree to me than I can say the big green sort of things you'd get. Um, so let's think of this as like an autumn-y type 
layout. I'm, I'm, I, I like these as they are, so I'm going to leave them like that. Uh, and if if the colour's a bit off, then I can actually just airbrush them in situ. That's not a biggie. So we've got the um, cliff face just on this side. Bit of grass in there. So it's coming along, guys. Okay, so what we've got then is uh, a tiny little tree uh, that I've made. I'll show you the box this came out of and how I've got this. Um, I've got what's called a, a pin vise. Um, so it's a handheld uh, drill, if you like. And this drill bit is about 1.6 mil. So I'm just by hand putting a little hole in there. And then I just do a little test fit with the tree. Now it's going to fall over because the hole's a bit big, but what I'll do, you see, is I'll make sure, oh yeah, that looks okay. And then um, I'll blob a bit of super glue on that and stick it in. And and that's it, that's, that's how I've done all of the trees. What would be next? Well, the easy thing to do, um, because I've already got one, is put a buffer in, okay? So, there's our side in, and simple as, I just put a buffer in. Now, you can't buy those, because I made that. Um, I 3D printed that one. Uh, but I might use it, I might not, we might come back to it, but I've got a buffer there now. I could super glue that down, but I'm not going to. We're just going to leave that there for a minute, just to visualise sort of what we're going to get. What I really want to do, though, is um, I've got myself... Let's just move this back. I was trying to make a short video, but layouts just aren't short in any means. I've got myself some, um, I'm going to try and say this right, catenary system, or it's a mast pack of 10, I'm reading this. So there's 10 in there, there's 5 um, short reach, and then there's 5 long reach. Um, now, what I've done is I've gone around the board before I showed you, but I just want to tell you what I have done. I have used a 2.4mm drill bit with that same uh, pin vise drill by hand, and I have gone along the track here, and I've put a hole there, and then what I've done is I've got two Mark III coaches, one coach, two coach, and then we've got another hole just there. And that's how I've gone along one side, one there, you can just see him there, but on the other side of the track, they're about halfway. Okay, so it goes du, 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 du. Uh, That's not so that the left hand rail and right hand rail um, interact in any way, shape, or form. What it is, is so that I can just stagger them. And the reason I have drilled the holes, I'm not gluing these in, okay. So I have these at the ready. Um, that's one short one, and they, they look fantastic. Definitely worth the money, I'd say. Depends how many you need, but they look great. And um, So that hole's just big enough for me to put these in. So you want to drill them quite straight, otherwise they'll be wonky. And, and that's one in. I, I'm not going to hold them down with anything, because... Uh, I'm going to show you some videos later. Um, basically, it's so I can run locos that are electric or not electric, or have one side of the the these two main lines. I have one side electric, one side not electric, yada yada, that kind of thing. Um, what I've done is I have a short one, and then I, then I go for a sorry a short reach one, and then I go for a long reach one, so it's it's longer, and then it goes shorter. So it should always go shorter, longer. Uh, shorter, longer, and it goes all the way down the track. So I've drilled all the holes already, and um, the, the reason that they do this, where it goes shorter, uh, shorter, longer, is so that the wire over the loco actually goes at a zigzag above the loco when it's running. Now, I didn't know this, but I do now. It's so that the the wire doesn't just wear one mark on the pantograph of the loco, it minimizes, it gives like an even wear on the pantograph, that's the idea behind it when it's giving electricity to the loco, so that's cool. Um, what I'm going to do though, I've, 
I'll show you some videos of this layout with these uh, pantograph receivers or givers. Uh, I'll show you a video now of this layout um, as it is, because I've already ran some trains around it. And um, I think then, whilst you're watching that lot, I'll have a ponder and uh, try and think about what else needs doing on this layout. Uh, because really, I could add a million and one trees on this, but I think for the time being, dare I say it, I think it's kind of there. Like it's it's good enough at the minute for me. What I will want to do though, and I think I'll make this another video, um, is I want to put a light signal on this layout so that some way, shape or form it will be green and red to aspect um, and you know you can stop the locos at it or not so this is what we've got I'll show you some runnings of the uh, running of the locos and then I think we'll call it quits there um, because as far as I can see it's I'm pretty happy with this when you when you've got the camera down here um, and you put like a just just a bit of a blue bit of linen up behind the uh, the layout. It did not change the way it looks, and I've I've literally just slapped track on a shelf, uh, a bit of well, a bit of plaster cast, a bit of paint, a bit of lots of glue. So hopefully this video has been helpful. I'll leave you with some running. Let me know what you think. Um, I'm not calling this finished by any means, but I'm, I'm I just wanted to slap this together so that I can get some videos out to you. Um, you've previously just seen the review on the uh, Class 90, the new tooling by uh, Graham Farish there, and that was filmed on this layout. So there's a bit of uh, time machine-ness going on with these videos that I'm bringing out, but let's call it there with this this layout. If you've got any ideas, like, hey, you should do this, or because I might put fences and things on here, or uh, we viewed some uh, real trains the other day. I'll show you them now, actually. They're pretty cool. So without further ado, uh, let's get let's get on with the running of this layout, shall we? Um, hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, hopefully it's been useful. If there's any questions you got, just ask away, guys.